these occasions like this. So um, I will share the screen with you now, but you will just see, or oh, oh, I cannot share. Can you maybe open it for me? And then I can show some yeah. pictures. One second, en enable. Yes. So um, please don't be mad at me that um, it still says Confucius Institute München on it <laughs> because I used it last time there. Um, yeah, I'm just very bad with numbers. So a creative job is perfect for me. So I think it should be possible now for you to ch share yes. your screen. Yes, yes, I can see. So one moment, please. Okay, share. So. So my name is, uh, is uh, Thomas in German and Afu in Chinese. This means so much as much as like mm, the, the lucky one or the happy one. So I had a very, very nice Chinese name um, given myself. It was Du Fulong. For the ones who speak Chinese, they maybe um, can understand this name. But uh, and, and I really liked it because it's very traditional, I think. Even there is not, not such a name in Chinese, but uh, then I went to a TV show once and then the director says, this is a very ugly name and we would just call you Afu. And <laughs> beginning from 2014 or 13, I like everyone just knows me by Afu. And if you know me before, you can see some pictures before. Um, this is, uh, I looked a little bit more like Buddha before the years before. So a lot of people think it's, it was a very good name for me. So I changed a little bit since then, but still use this name. So uh, yeah, today uh, I'm very sorry that I didn't change this slide, but uh, we want to talk um, a little bit. It, it's uh, always the same. So um, the, the pictures are the same. So this is my hometown in Germany one in winter and one in summer, you see on the right or on the left side, I don't know how you can see it, uh, the picture with the lake, inside the lake, that's me. So this is not Loch Ness with Nessie, it's me inside because we don't have air condition in Germany, like in most of the buildings. So that's why when it's getting hot in summer, you have to uh, spring, uh, jump into the lake to, to cool off. And if I show these pictures to my Chinese friends, they are all, think it's very it's a very nice place and very enjoyable and it sure is but if you live there for a long time and if you are like me grown up in the German countryside you know it's getting boring um, very soon for young people so at this time I already thought um, this is, uh, was a very popular saying in the China, on the Chinese internet a couple of years ago. It means something like the world is so big, I want to go out and see it. So this is also very popular right now because um, now traveling is quite hard in the last two years. So um, this sentence still is in my heart all the time. So I really want to go out and see the, the world again. So I decided to quit my job at, um, at the bank and uh, study Chinese. I have been to China in 2007 as a tourist and I really like the country here, even though I couldn't speak any Chinese or just a little Chinese, but I experienced the uh, people and the country, the food, the culture, and I found out that even we cannot talk to each other but most of the Chinese people I met were so nice, so curious about me. And um, so I decided one day I really have to go and study Chinese. And I did in 2011, I went to Ruhr Universität Bochum and studied East Asian politics and economy. So every time I come back to Germany, there are a lot of old people in my village living there and they're quite interested in China. So if, if we um, set aside the media, I find that a lot of uh, German people are still quite interested in China. And it's, it's a good interest. It's not that they also think that China is a big danger. Maybe this, this changed in the last two years, but still, I think they're quite interested in China. And there's one question that I get asked quite often about China. Maybe you can guess somebody can guess, like, what is the one question I get asked quite often about China? Who wants to take a guess? Do they eat dogs? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, also, also, yeah. But this is not, not the one. Uh, 
how you speak Chinese so good. Like, yeah, also, also, but there's one one specific question about China that makes me think a lot. So a topic a lot of Germans are very interested in, and also a lot of Chinese people are very interested in, it's the weather. So there's this one guy, he always asks me when I come to Germany, how is the weather in China? And, and I, I'm always very curious about this question because it shows me that he has no idea about China. He has no idea how big China is. And then uh, when I show him pictures like um, Beijing, the cultural capital and, and the capital of uh, China by itself, then Shanghai, where I live, the financial and trade center of China. Then this is Hainan. I just came back from Hainan last week also, but this is uh, this was talking a couple of years ago. And um, it's like Hawaii for me. It's a very, very beautiful island. It has very be beautiful beaches and, and it has palms and very tasty chicken. So it's a very interesting place. Then on the left, uh, you can see this is uh, Shengs Island uh, close to um, Shanghai, not very close, just uh, one and a half hours drive from Shanghai way. It's like Ireland in my eyes. Then on, on the other side, you see me standing on the border to Russia in uh, Heilongjiang in northern China. Then this is me on the um, in the Gobi Desert in uh, Gansu in western China. And if you can read Chinese, you see my, my colleague made this um, PPT for me before and she wrote Afu Chi Luotuo, which means Afu is riding a camel. And I said, this is no camel, this is a horse. But she said, like, with your weight at this time, um, if you ride this for two hours, it will become a, a camel very soon. So I just uh, put it uh, on, on this. This is also in the Gansu province. Um, we made uh, camping in the desert with some very beautiful dogs of my friend. This is me and my wife also in uh, Dunhuang, Western China, having very tasty da panji and huyang menbing. Very, very tasty food there, over there. Yes, so um, I really want to show the people uh, how China is in my eyes because um, I grew up in a big house in the countryside in Germany. Now with uh, 10,000 people, I showed you the pictures. Now I live in the 20 uh, something floor in, uh, in a big building in, Chi in Shanghai. Shanghai is a city with uh, over 25 million people living here. So it's a huge difference. And a lot of people can't understand why I choose to live in China and can't imagine how it is to live here. And um, I want to show everyone that it's not as different as most people think. So if you take my my father and my mother-in-law, their family, and if you take my parents' family, they're not as different, even different as everyone thinks. Even we have so much cultural, um, so such a huge cultural difference, the language is not the same. But in the end, I think that every family wants to um, have a healthy lifestyle, that everyone is healthy and happy, that everyone can uh, earn enough money to make a decent living and that uh, the children and future generations have a better life than oneself. So um, I always think it's very, very important to focus on our um, focus on, on not, not, not to focus on the differences, but focus on things where we are very similar. And I, I think there are a lot of things, even um, the media wants to tell us otherwise, but um, yeah, so this is what I try to do. Uh, I am very optimistic and I'm still very optimistic and I hope and I do my best to um, make the relationship between the people of China and the people of Germany or, or the people of the Western countries better and better to understand each other more and more. So um, yeah, this is my wife. Um, we took some pictures before our wedding. This is already uh, almost 10 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. And uh, in my main project, what I do is uh, doing videos in China. And when I'm in Germany, for sure, for sure, also in, in Germany. And um, the, for example, a video about Xiaolongxia in Berlin about the Berlin lobster. And um, yeah, I also do some other project uh, between um, China and Germany. I was invited to be part of the delegation with our uh, German president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, uh, three years ago when he came to China. 
and I was very happy to share my story in China and um, about my life in China. So, and besides this, I'm, I'm also writing books. I wrote two books in German. One is already translated in Chinese. And this is also something I really like because I'm an avid re reader myself. So I really also like to write and share my stories with um, the German audience. Yeah. And, and also this is not on this, play, uh, this um, page. I'm making a podcast with a good friend of mine. It's called Marketing Made in China. It's more about the business in China. And we talk in German about um, yeah, marketing business in China and life in China um, from, from more, more from a marketing and business perspective. Yeah, that's me. So um, I hope um, we have a lot of questions because when I talk on my own the whole time, I can't learn anything because I know everything I tell you. So um, I'm very happy um, about every question you have. Uh, Kobian, I think you are mute because I couldn't hear anything. Yes, yes, you're mute. Not on the system, but we can't hear you. No, we still cannot hear you. No? Ah, yeah, I think, no. Yeah, no. I think my, my headset turned itself uh, off. Okay, uh, so thanks so much for your presentation. Um, it's it's quite interesting, and I mean, uh, I think the the uh, the example with the weather it uh, puts really puts it in perspective that uh, people in Germany or maybe maybe in many parts of the world still have this idea of China being like this one place where everybody speaks Chinese and it's all kind of the same, but there's actually uh, so much variety uh, in a cultural and of course also in a landscape way. I mean, that was, uh, you showed that very, in a very nice way. Uh, one cultural uh, difference that I uh, noticed in your recent uh, videos um, since, since you lost a lot of weight is that literally every video starts with someone telling you that you lost weight. And I think this is so funny because this is really totally different from Germany. It's such a no-no topic in, in German to talk about someone's, someone's weight. And in China, it's basically almost like, hi, how are you? Yeah, it's, it's the same. It was the same when I was uh, overweight before. Like people, uh, when, when I was over, overweight because I was so overweight that um, like <laughs> my weight changed uh, between like weeks. And then every video, would there would be comments like, or you gained weight or you lost weight or, or something like this. And also right. like in person, this is a big difference. And I had to get used to it before that people see you on the street and they haven't seen you maybe for a while. And they say, oh, you lost weight or you gained weight, which is definitely a no-go topic in Germany. But um, yeah, um, <laughs> Chinese people really like to say it. And my wife even tells me if you say it to older people, it's also some kind of compliment. I don't know if it's like this just in Shanghai or in, in all the regions of China because uh, China comes maybe from a quite um, poor past where people were hungry. And if you tell other old people that you gained some weight and you became a little bit more fat, that it's a kind of compliment. Yeah, quite great. Uh, I think Mickey, uh, you raised your, your hand for, for a question. Yes, I have a lot of questions actually. So actually one of your videos or two of the videos that really um, really brought me as a fan is one is the video that you bought some pork, the, the most important part of the pork, the wuhua rou, and uh, give them as gifts to the street cleaners in, in Shanghai. That was a video I really, really liked. The other one is the one that you, you followed, you drove with a taxi driver several hours, more than five hours, I think, to his hometown and sent some bags, some gifts to, to his kids and also some money to help them with the, the children's education. I thought that was the one that was also very touching. So, but, but I know that making these movies really take a lot of time and a lot of effort. So what was really motivating you to do those videos? 
So I, uh, for, for those people who haven't seen the videos, there was uh, one video. Uh, I was like very, very overweight before I was around 140 kilos uh, on my um, high peak. And after I lost 30 pounds, uh, around 15 kilos, I went to a butcher and bought some, some meat to make it visible to myself how much weight I lost already. And I bought this meat and then I gave it for free to street cleaners because uh, a lot of street cleaners in Shanghai, they, um, they live under quite poor conditions and they don't get to eat meat like very often. So I, uh, my first motivation was to motivate, mo motivate myself and to visualize how much weight I lost. And the other thing was to, to help some other people out. So um, this is what I did. And, and then I did another video. This was uh, actually a paid cooperation with a German brand where I just randomly took a taxi in Shanghai and asked the driver where his hometown was and where when the last time was he saw his child and he said like his hometown was around 650 kilometers from Shanghai and uh, he didn't see his child in more than half a year so seven months ago so I said okay what uh, do you think should we go home to your hometown today I will pay your taxi fare um, back and forth for, from Shanghai and then um, we will give your child a surprise today and, and we did that and it was a really great video. It turned out really well. So um, yeah, for me, uh, it's making videos is also uh, a kind of challenge for myself because um, you wouldn't guess it, but I'm uh, a quite shy person actually. So talking to strangers and talking to people I don't know well, with a camera in my hand and uh, doing some challenges, I don't know the end, um, it's... Um, a very big challenge for me. So uh, yeah, this is also a learning for me and I hope that I can grow um, my personality and I can overcome my, my shyness and I can overcome uh, my fears to do it and um, also help the people in the video and make an entertaining and uh, touching sometimes uh, videos for the audience. Thank you so much, Afu. Uh, we have another question from Brenda. Hi, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. Um, hi, Afu. First of all, thank you for uh, taking your time uh, for us. Um, I love especially the videos where you um, walking around and just talk to normal local people. I think that's where we get the most insight of the people there. And how did you get this confidence or where or how do you have any tips on how to start just talk to strangers on the street? Especially um, it's not like your um, it's not the culture where you grew up. It's not your mother tongue language. So. Where did you get this confidence um, to just start talking to people? Yeah, this is all practice, all practice. As we say in German, this is noch kein Meister vom Himmel gefallen. And it's the same for me. And I tell you till now, when I know I have to make a video with a street interview, I still sleep very bad the night before because I'm still nervous and I can tell you the success rate for this videos for especially for street interviews is uh, around 50%. So if I want to interview 10 people for my video, I have to ask at least 20. If uh, if I'm lucky, maybe less, but most of the time I'm not that lucky. So it's still a big challenge for me and even taking up the camera and talking to the camera in front of other people, not even talking to other people is still a, a big challenge for me. But I tell myself, uh, I just have to do it. There's no way around. I have to make this video because um, my editor is waiting to edit the video and I, there's no excuse not to do it. And so I just go and I tell, and I had one colleague who, who, um, who, who's not working with me anymore, but uh, I learned something very important for, from him. He told me, so don't look at the people and um, make decisions on their, uh, how they look or, or what they do if you want to interview them. So uh, just ask everyone. And, and I did it and it really worked out very well because I saw some people where I said, oh, he looks quite strict or she looks uh, in a hurry. 
um, so I won't ask them before. But then when I ask them, and they're quite happy to to talk to me and um, to give an interview. So yeah, this is uh, just practice, 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 and just think about it. What is the worst thing that can happen to you? The worst thing is that they can that they say no, I don't want mm -hmm. to talk to you. So they won't beat you up, I think, or they won't attack you or, um, or whatever, most of the time, hopefully. So I'm always thinking, uh, yeah, the worst thing that can happen is that they say no. So, and, and this is nothing bad. I mean, this is also a good relationship advice. If you see a beautiful girl or a beautiful boy on the street and you want to talk to him, but you're too shy, just think like, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing can happen that she or he says, no, um, I have a boyfriend or I have a girlfriend or whatever. So yeah, <laughs> if, so don't uh, miss these opportunities. Just go and talk to people. Most of the time, nothing bad will happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's also a good uh, advice for like in business when you have like business talks. Most of the times we don't know how to start or we do like awkward small talk and we talk about the weather. But I just like to see um, how confident you walk up to people and just talk about things and they start to open up so much and tell you so much about the past or about the insecurities and about the worries. I think that's uh, very beautiful. Yeah, you're right. Also, the one thing that I found out is because I think you're talking about my 3 a.m. videos, maybe yeah, uh, talking yeah. to people at uh, 3 a.m. in the morning on the street. Uh, the good thing is that some people already went to party and had some alcohol. So this makes <laughs> things sometimes a little bit easier. So but but not all of them. So yeah, but this is definitely um, in a small advantage I have uh, at 3 a.m. in the night. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas and Brenda. Uh, we have another question um, by Fritz. Yes, good morning or good evening. Uh, my question would be, um, because I'm also German and I tried to learn Chinese, and I would like to know the simple question, uh, how did you learn Chinese and how did you become so good? Because I mean, you can imitate dialects from Chinese, uh, which I find very impressive. And I think that's how you became famous. So. Yeah, maybe you could comment on that and uh, try to explain a way how a, a German yeah. can learn such good Chinese. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your question. This is a question I get asked very often. And the one thing is that, um, yeah, there's one sad thing I have to say at first. It is like I had a lot of Uh, classmates in, in my university who learned Chinese with me and um, they learned the same amount of time, they learned also all the years, but um, for some people they just don't have the, um, they, they don't have the ability to understand Chinese because Chinese is such a hard language to learn so um, for me, even for me now, it's, uh, it's still so hard and every day I get the wrong tones and um, My, my wife laughs at me because I say some funny things because I get the tones wrong or I get the grammar wrong or I forget some words and don't know how to say some something. So yeah, it, Chinese will always be a struggle for everyone. So I, I, I but I, I, I know a lot of foreigners who speak much better Chinese than I do, but I also think it's connected to the question before that I know that my Chinese is not perfect, but I just talk. And um, a lot of Chinese people really appreciate it. And nobody will demand you to speak perfect Chinese because um, yeah, there's no need. You can communicate. I can talk about everything I want. I can um, communicate everything I want to. I can talk to people and if they don't understand, I can rephrase it. I can try to change uh, uh, um, a kind of uh, change the way I say things. So, um, and then also it's, it's the same for my wife. My wife, she learned German for a very, very short time and her German is not as good as my Chinese. But every time we go to Germany, she doesn't need my help because she's quite uh, confident and um, She talks to the German people and it's the same in Germany. German people, I found out they really appreciate it when they see foreigners trying 
really trying hard to speak uh, German and uh, trying hard to communicate by themselves. And uh, the same the same thing uh, I, I just said before, it's like nobody will kill you or nobody, nobody will attack you if you don't speak very fluent German. I think this is also a quite German thing. Every, every, time, every time I talk to um, Americans or to, to people from the U UK in English, um, they, they say they can hear for sure from my accent that I'm from Germany. But um, they're happy that I can that they can they can communicate in their mother tongue with me, and um, a lot of Germans they have this thinking that you have to, and also Chinese Chinese people also have this thinking that you have to speak perfect English with the perfect pronunciation, so uh, nobody will make fun of you. But uh, honestly speaking, I don't care. Like if people make fun of me of my because of my German accent, that's their loss because I can communicate in, in English and, and you can hear it that my English is not perfect, but I think I can make my point in English and everyone can understand. So this is uh, the first thing I would say. So if you have the opportunity to talk in Chinese, talk in Chinese. However, um, however your grammar is, however your pronunciation is, however your vocabulary is, just talk. And the second point is for sure the best thing to, or the best environment to learn Chinese is in China or, or also the US could be because uh, if you go to Los Angeles or uh, San Francisco, there are a lot of uh, Chinese speaking people, uh, uh, huge Chinese speaking community there. So if you have the opportunity to surround yourself with Chinese speakers, this is the best thing. For me, I learned Chinese two years in Germany and this was very good for the basics. But then I came to China and I had Chinese classes. And after the Chinese classes, you take a taxi, you take the bus, you speak Chinese, you see Chinese characters. Then um, you meet your friends, you meet with your family and uh, you speak Chinese. So there's everywhere, Chinese everywhere. and. Um, 24 hours seven. So this is the best thing to learn Chinese um, in China or in, in a Chinese speaking environment. And what I did to improve my daily Chinese is during my studies, for sure, I, I did all the exercises in, my, in our workbook or in our Chinese book. But a good thing for my listening comprehension, especially was watching Chinese soap operas on um, on YouTube. There are a lot of Chinese soap operas because everyone knows soap operas. It's uh, all about love and uh, food, relationships, family, and so on and so on. Very easy topics, very easy language, and uh, quite good and entertaining way to improve your Chinese skills. Yeah, and also I have to say, for me, maybe it's uh, a little bit easier to learn languages. I'm very bad at math. I already told you. Um, very bad with numbers, but um, because I grew up in a Russian German family and in my uh, home, we spoke uh, German, Russian and uh, German dialect, Plattdeutsch. So I grew up with three languages and this may be helped me from uh, from my childhood to develop a little bit uh, a language skill, um, a small talent for learn learning languages. All right, thank you. And one more question, if I may. Um, uh, I want to know because uh, as you might know, as a German, we have very specific media coverage on China here in Germany. And I would just like in general to know your opinion about it and what do you think about it? how China's portrayed in the German news? So a, a lot of Chinese friends, they, um, they complain about it and um, uh, not just Chinese friends, but also foreigners living here in China. They, um, because they, they live here and um, for sure we have to say, if you're an expert in China, in, in Shanghai, you have a privileged life, right? And um, maybe you cannot compare yourself to, um, to a Chinese migrant worker or so on and so on. But um, a lot of people still think that the Western media coverage of uh, China is quite biased. And the other way around, around it's the same. Media all over the world is, is, is biased in my eye. So um, 
it's not it's also the the chinese media also talks a lot about germany if it's good or bad but <laughs> there's also a lot of things um i don't agree with or if you see the us media so i think as uh, grown ups um, we all know that never take your your information just from one source so take a lot mm -hmm. of sources make your own image and um, don't um, don't just believe one source so um my personal approach is um i don't uh, watch a lot of media coverage at all um depending like um regarding china regarding germany regarding europe because i'm so, <laughs> i'm so busy with my own personal life that i think um um there's no need for me because if something important happens, somebody will tell me. And this, I, I, I find it out like um, if I don't uh, watch uh, the, the the Spiegel or, or Zeit Online or whatever for one week, and I don't have the feeling that I miss anything. And there's this one thing called FOMO, fear of missing out. And uh, this is one, yeah, this is one sick, uh, one, one, um, no, not sick. This is one phenomenon of our uh, of our times that people really think if they don't check their phone every uh, day, a uh, couple of times that they um, miss on something. But I really think I don't. So uh, I really try to stay away from my phone, from the internet, from the news um, as much as possible because um, it doesn't affect my personal life in 99.9% .9 of the times. And I read a sentence before this is, uh, which I really agree with, but you, you may not agree. Um, there are some people who think, especially people who, who work in media, think uh, this is maybe a wrong sentence, but I really think that a lot of media tries to make all the world's problems um, how did they say it? Like they tried to make all the world problems your personal problems. And um, yeah, so for me, it's, uh, I also think so that I cannot change the world. I just can change my family. I can change um, the life of the people around me and uh, my own life. So this is what I try to focus on. And um, uh, every time I go to Germany, I also go to um, a lot of TV shows and radio shows, give interviews to, um, to German journal journalists. Uh, and, and I also find that um, they, a lot of people who talk about me, my personal life in China, they are very friendly, very curious, and also very, and not hostile or something. So if you talk about the big topics like economy, politics, um, there's a lot of hostility between the West and China, but also the West and Russia. And it always has been like the last hundred or maybe even thousand years. Um, as long as there's media, there has been hostility. But um, as soon as you go on a personal, on a personal uh, level, you see there's not much hostility left, even um, between China and Japan. If you see a lot of Chinese people uh, love Japan, a lot of Japanese people love China. I had a lot of Japanese um, classmates here on, in my um, university in Shanghai. Uh, and even I had North Korean um, classmates, three North Korean classmates. And the North Korean classmate, he asked me once, so what, <laughs> what do you think about uh, North Korea? And I told him very honestly, like I just, I don't know North Korea. I just know what um, what our media says about North Korea. And and he told me a lot about the life in North Korea. And um, yeah, so it, it's it's quite interesting. So I always think we all should more concentrate on on um, yeah the the personal level, which is much more important. And I always invite everyone who is in in, in Germany and talks with me about China. I invite them to come to China, like. Um, when there's no pandemic, like before the pandemic. And my family members came here a lot of times. And uh, because for me, sometimes it's also quite hard to explain China to other people. Uh, and also like when we're talking about China, what is China? I, I live in Shanghai and I'm not nothing like a China expert. I, I don't understand anything about China, I would say, because China is so huge. There are so uh, many people living here, such a long history, such a big country. So 
Um, it's very hard to explain. So I really hope that the pandemic is over quite soon and more and more people can come to China and make their own, um, yeah, get their own impression and, and see how it is and that it's not this evil country like some sometimes the media wants to uh, show, to, show to us, yeah. Right. So much. Thank, thank you so much, Thomas. I, I think one thing is understatement that you uh, do not influence or impact uh, the life of people outside of your family. I think you do very much uh, with your very uh, job, actually. And I think that's also what connects you to uh, like the idea of Asian European society, that even though people come from different countries and have different uh, governments and, and cultural backgrounds, but um, if you look at it on a personal level, every, actually, most people yeah, are just curious. Uh, and no, no one is actually uh, hostile to each other. And yeah. I think that's uh, this concept also of soft power. I think it's really uh, what all of us uh, need to proclaim, at least in our own circles. And I think that's something very, very important also if we want to like uh, lower tensions on a, on a global scale. Because if no one you know, wants to uh, engage in this uh, kind of hostile uh, media uh, theme wherever it comes from um, then I think um, it's, it's, it's much better for it's a, it's a much better world that, that we live in um, I have actually one question right next to me hello Afo. hello Niho. Uh, I have a question for you um, so do you hear me yes I do yeah, okay um, so uh, living in China for more than 10 years, what do you like the most about this country and what do you hate the most? Sorry, there's uh, someone on the door. I to... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one thing about living in China, you get package, package delivery on Sunday. <laughs> So, okay. Um, do I need to repeat myself, or did you get my question? No, I just uh, listen. I heard like living ten years in China, and then yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you like the most about the country, and what do you hate the most? So for me, it's not just the difference China and Germany. It's also the difference of living in a mega city in Shanghai and living in a countryside in Germany. So what I what I really like about uh, China is after even uh, the last the first time I came here was in 2007, already 13 years ago, and uh, I've spent here. Um, a lot, many, many years of my life. And even last year, I went to so many places with so many different cultures, so different people and so different foods that I, yeah, that, that there's always something to discover. And uh, I, we even talked about learning Chinese. Uh, learning Chinese is also the same. You, you never stop learning. It's, it's also um, something that, um, yeah, something that will never stop. So there's always a lot of challenges uh, living here in China. And uh, the other thing is like what, um, I, I don't hate anything. So those, there's not, no room for hate in my, in my heart. Um, but uh, if I think, if you ask, if you, if you change the question to what could Chinese learn from Germans, I think sometimes they really could learn to enjoy life a little bit more. And it's not just about working hard and making a lot of money because there's, I have some friends who, who just do, do that all the time. And in Germany, it's often that weekend is just weekend and we don't answer any emails on weekend and uh, we don't work on the weekends. There are even some German companies who are introducing self-deleting emails right now, which I think it's a, it's a great idea that if you get emails after uh, seven o'clock in the evening or on the weekend they will be deleted uh, automatically and the the one who sent the email will get a message that says please come again um, or send this email again during work hours which um, is not very um, feasible in China I think uh, because there's WeChat and um, everyone is online 24 7 so um, Having a better work-life balance, I think this is something um, here. A lot of people here in China could learn from the Germans. Yeah. 
Thanks so much. I think the next uh, question comes from Hansi. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me, Afu? Hello? Yes, yes. <clears throat> so I really liked your first book, um, maybe because I a little bit share the same story as you. Uh, I went to China in 2019 and also met the girl I really like. And so we together till now. But the problem with the pandemic is I can't go to China. So we didn't see for two years now. Um, so I have more like the two questions. So you're the unofficial ambassador for, from Germany. So maybe you know a little bit more about how the possibility is to go to China right now, or uh, what can you do to go to China right now? Or when will it be possible to go? And the second question is about more personality. Um, how is it easy to get along with the um, Chinese parents and grandparents? Also because they don't know too much about you as a foreign nature. So they're a little bit shy or a little bit um, skeptic about it. Yeah, thank you so much, Anzi, and congratulations that you can make it uh, two years and uh, most of the time long distance relationship because I have the same experience. Me and my wife, we had around more than one year long distance relationship. I was in Germany at this time and uh, she was here in Shanghai. So I, I can tell you, if you can make this uh, long distance relationship time, you will have a very happy and long marriage like us because um, in, in a long distance relationship, you just can talk. There's nothing, not a lot of else you can, you can do. So for coming to China, this is a very hard question. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. So I, I honestly don't know. And, and I don't think there's a, a lot of ways to come to China right now. My, um, I, I met uh, some people from the German consulate here in Shanghai last week, and they also said there's nothing, no changes in sight. And um, yeah, this is um, also a big question of the next year or two years, how to continue with the COVID situation, right? Because in China now we had two years of a very comfortable life. And um, personally, I really hope that international travel will be possible very soon, but um, it's not that easy. If, if you take a look at the, uh, at the Chinese healthcare system, uh, and um, if we would have the same amount of cases um, in, in percentage like, in, like we have in Germany, it, it would be um, a disaster for, for, for China. So I really can understand why they still try to um, try to reduce the cases. And, uh, but I don't know how, how it will go on. So um, if you have a work visa already here in China, then I think, and I, I saw someone um, also wrote it in the, in the uh, chat, then you can come and also, um, yes, uh, Israel, uh, Louis Lepis said also, you can try to find a project in China and apply for the PU letter. Yeah. So you, if you get a job here in China and um, your company or the German Chamber of Commerce can, can send you a PU letter, that might help. But um, yeah, I think uh, also the German Co Chamber of Commerce is maybe a better uh, better um, contact uh, contact uh, you can you should contact them and not me so because i'm um, yeah i'm not an expert uh, here yeah and for this for a study program i don't know if uh, this is um, the thing the right thing because as far as i know there are no international um, students right now uh, coming into china the ones that are here already they can study but i don't think that you can enter China now on a study visa. So um, I don't know, but uh, uh, please don't ask me because uh, I don't rely on my comments because I'm, I'm not an expert in this case. So for the personal one, I'm uh, quite an expert. If you, um, I always think uh, it's the same in the personal and also in business and also whatever you do, I think the best strategy to make people like you is to be authentic. 
So authentic uh, authenticity is one thing that is very, very underrated because I read some books on China before, like how, how, how the etiquette is in China, how you should dress in China. And um, then people come here and, I, and sometimes I think it's like carnival because they, they dress up very, very formal to meet with Chinese business partners. And then they see the Chinese business partners are in jeans and sneakers. And um, so just do whatever you feel comfortable and also meeting with your parents um, in law and meeting with your Chinese family or your future Chinese family. I think um, just be yourself uh, because sooner or later you have to, um, you cannot play a role for, for uh, decades. So it's better that they know you. And honestly speaking, I think that most people, even my, my German parents, were not very um, happy in the beginning when I told them that I have a Chinese girlfriend because they are very traditional Christians and very strict. So then there, there, there's this uh, future daughter-in-law from a Buddhist family from China. Um, they were not very happy, but now they love her. Everyone loves her. So um, because she's very authentic and I try to be authentic. So this is the one thing that um, I can tell you don't try to act something or you you don't you you don't have to become chinese or something because you you never will be chinese you're um you're a foreigner you always will be a foreigner and just just be yourself try to um try to accept try to um how, how is it called like uh, try to respect the the chinese culture the family culture and um, be yourself and i think this is the only thing where you can be successful, um, yeah, for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question from Julia. Uh, yes. Um, so I was wondering, I mean, we've talked about this uh, question before, or you've talked about it, that the media coverage is sometimes quite negative on China. And although I would say also most people like on a personal level, they are quite interested and have are more like curious, but I'm sure you've still encountered people that are also quite negative and try to argue or try to, you know, give you this like very negative arguments about China. Like, how do you handle those kind of situations? Like, do you try to defend China? Because I think as someone who knows about the culture, who's been to China, I think sometimes it's hard because you want to kind of defend China or you want to educate this person, but some people are very stubborn. So what do you do in those kind of situations? Like, how do you handle them? So I have one, 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 one motto for myself. So you don't have to win every argument because it's uh, some people, if, if I really see people who are interested in China, who are ready, who are maybe they have this, um, attitude that they say okay I could change my opinion I could um, yeah maybe I'm wrong and, and also maybe I'm wrong right because uh, th that's the thing but if you encounter people who you see on the, the first sentence or the five first five minutes you talk to them you know they will never change their opinion they just want to hear themselves talk so <laughs> I, I don't argue like uh, there's no, no need to argue because they will never change your opinion so um, this is the thing um, there, there's, uh, it's also a good advice for, for all other arguments. You don't have to win every argument. Sometimes you just have to say, okay, maybe you're right. And, and you will see this makes your life much more easier. If you, if you uh, tell some people, okay, maybe you're right. And um, they also will be very surprised because some people, they're really, they, they just want to argue. They want to fight with you. And um, yeah, so this is my approach. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Afu. Uh, we just had a raised hand that went down again. Uh, not sure is the... Ah, Israel, here, yeah. Here you go. Hi, Thomas. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey, hi. Thank you so much for your time today for, for us. Um, I have a, a question to you. Uh, last year, I, I live uh, in Shanghai. And I, I was really impressed about um, how is the, the work philosophy from the, for the Chinese people. And I work with a, in, here in Germany for a German car industry company. And I was sent there. 
And the, the question always for us was, um, ah, the Chinese people need to learn for us, need to learn the German way, need mm. to learn the German philosophy. But for me, uh, I'm not German and Mexican, but I live here in, in Germany since like 10 years. So I, I start to work here and, and, and and take the all the, the the German knowledge. So for me, at some point, was the question: Why we always ask, uh, what can China, why the Chinese people cannot learn our German way? In my case, it was why the Chi the German cannot uh, learn the Chinese way. Uh, wh what do you think about uh, what do we need to take for the China philosophy to the German philosophy? Yeah, you're, you're so right, uh, Israel, and, and thank you so much for bringing up this point. I met some people before here who worked for big companies and they said, oh, I work um, 16 hours every day and uh, I try to teach my Chinese stuff the German way. And I think they, they try to just make German people uh, out of Chinese people. And even if they would work 24 hours a day, and even if a day had 30 hours, they would never succeed because this is a failed mission. And as you are so, so right, if you go to Mexico and you try to make uh, Germans out of your uh, Mexican um, fellas, it will never succeed. And I personally think uh, the best approach is really to take the advantages uh, of the German way of working and the advantages of the Chinese way of working and uh, to combine them together. And even in my personal life, I try to do it like some way of Chinese thinking. Um, I, I personally think that Chinese people are much more flexible than, than the German ones. And um, even sometimes um, when in, during my work, uh, People call me and ask me, do you have time tomorrow? And um, it's all very, very spontaneous, but it, also, it can work out. So um, this kind of flexibility, I think, is definitely something we can learn from uh, China. And also the, the speed that uh, things are adapted and uh, things are pushed forward. I think this is also something that um, I really enjoy here. And uh, for example, I worked in a bank before, so I always really, f um, uh, in, I'm interested in all the cashless society and mobile payment. And uh, during my years here in China, I, wit I witnessed that in just in a couple of years, everyone went from cash to mobile payment. And in just, just uh, um, three or four years time, 99% of all the merchants and all the customers, they accept uh, WeChat and Alipay. So um, this is something quite interesting because in Germany, we will think a lot, um, which is also not bad, right? We will think a, a lot of privacy, security, and um, I don't think that there will, in the next 10 years, there will be something like uh, one or two um, platforms or apps uh, or mobile payment systems that will be accepted by 99% of the German people and merchants in, in Germany. So, um, this is really something um, where, where Chinese people say, okay, it makes my life more convenient uh, and it makes it easier. So we just do it. So uh, I always think if we can combine the Chinese speed uh, with the German quality, this would be a perfect country. So, but I don't know if, if we <laughs> totally can do agree. it. Sometimes like the speed and the flexi flexibility also brings um, uh, some quality issues, Definitely. right? So um, if we could, could combine these two things, I think this would be a, a great result, yeah. Right now, this is my biggest shock in the first week here in Europe. It's like, go back to the middle age. In China, it was like living in the future. And here is go back and then, hey, can I pay with Google Pay or with Apple Pay? It's like just one store from 10. And oh, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to have the cash in the hand. So yeah, let's see. <laughs> I really hope that in the future we take this kind of uh, Chinese dynamism, Chinese flexibility, and combine it, as you said, with the German quality. And maybe don't use all the procedures that we have. We can yeah, uh, yeah. potentially adjust this, the biggest procedures and take it out all what it, we don't need. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and, and also the Mexican food. I think <laughs> this would be a, a good attachment, right? Yeah, I, I should say something. It's it really in in Shanghai, in Shanghai there are better Mexican restaurants in whole Germany. Really, <laughs> is it incredible? Yeah. 
taken care of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tell the Chinese people, I had my first pork knuckle, Schweinshaxe in China, because I'm, I come from Northern Westphalia in, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm not from Southern Germany, so we don't eat a lot of Schweinshaxe, Axel, yeah. pork knuckle there. So, um, yeah, I, so there are also a lot of good German restaurants in, in Shanghai. Definitely. Thank you so much. Um, we have one more question. I think this will be the final one since we are running out of time uh, from uh, Benjamin. Uh, Afu, ni hao. Thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, Brenda touched a bit on this when she asked you about how you get the confidence to do the street interviews. But I'm curious to learn what made you decide in the first place to not only make videos, but also posting them online? Because putting yourself out there makes you sort of exposed and vulnerable to criticism and even being made fun of. So what made you take that extra step and putting yourself out there? So when I started thinking about these questions, it was already too late. So in the beginning, it was, it was just like, yeah, I don't know. We, we were thinking just we could make a fun video and uh, uh, we had really fun writing it and producing it and yeah, so uh, it was no big plan. And there was also no thoughts on the consequences or no thoughts like, how could it end? Where could I be? But um, if you ask me now, I definitely uh, don't regret doing it. And uh, even there are bad comments, uh, there are people making fun, but um, even in, in real life, <laughs> it's, it's the same. So, uh, all in all, I think for me, it worked out very well. And I'm, I'm so happy that I did it because I, if, if I wouldn't do it, like we would never meet, um, I would never have the opportunity to meet so many interesting people to do uh, so many interesting things, to go to so many interesting places. This, I'm, I'm very grateful that I did it at this time. And yeah, honestly speaking, like uh, in, in German, uh, you say, wir sind da so reingeschlittert. It was just like, uh, just like a coincidence. There was nothing planned about it. And uh, so, but, but still, this is oftentimes the best thing in life that the co coincidences, the things you never plan. So, yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of people say, yeah, you got very lucky that you did, did this and um, for those people I answered, no, it's not, not about luck, maybe just a little bit, maybe 1%, but 99% of it were like decisions we made. Like with my wife, we lived in Germany and we, we made a decision to go back to, to Shanghai and start our own um, company. We, we, we made the decision to post a video. We made the decision to continue posting videos and now six years, we still do it. So um, it's uh, about uh, decisions, make, making the right decisions and just 1% lucky. Yeah, thank you so much, Afu. Uh, this was a great, uh, yeah, well, Sunday morning for us, uh, evening for you already. Um, it was great to have you here. Um, I think the big hope for everybody is that um, the pandem pandemic will end at some point so we can all um, get more exchange, travel to China again and for all the uh, Chinese participants travel to Germany or to Europe and then in general we have more uh, cultural exchange over the world. I think that's maybe the thing that me personally I most dearly miss. Um, and um, I think that's also very, very important on a global and also on a political scale that uh, people meet and exchange. And yeah, I'm, I'm so also so thankful that you were here today as a guest um, to do that, uh, at least online, which is already much better than nothing. And I hope very much that um, we get the chance uh, maybe to, to do this again offline sometime. Um, yes. That would be very great. Yeah. And um, I hope that restrictions will fall. I mean, even though I'm not too optimistic for this year, unfortunately, um, you said it yourself, but um, yeah, we will see. Thanks everyone for taking their time, especially of course you, Thomas. And um, yeah, hope to do this again soon in person. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Einstein was also very happy. Our dog. Yeah. You see it. <laughs> Good. So I will uh, end the session now and um, everybody have a great uh, Sunday. Bye Thank bye. you so much. If you have some urgent questions, maybe Corbinia, you can send uh, 
You have my email address, yeah? If anybody yeah, needs if, it. Yeah, if any, anyone else has uh, questions that pop up, you can also shoot me an email at AES. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, uh, make the contact. It's uh, fine, yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you much. So much. And have a great Sunday. Good. Bye-bye, everybody.